And in order to praise God, you've got to open your mind. That everything that have breath. And if you're breathing today, come on and thank God for the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and tell him thank you. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. Clap your feet and tell him thank you. Come on and tell him thank you.
caught their fault, I guess it's mine. And, uh, but, but I understand what, what, what wonderful words. How many believe the report of the Lord? And uh, I believe I'm a believer on today. Thank God for my niece. Grateful for all of you who. Yes, sir. Uh, amen. Yeah, Brother D. John, I love that one. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to see you, sir. Pentecost. Amen. We, we have a great preacher that we get ready to present to you, one of the pioneers of our church. Yeah. And um, uh, you see here, Bishop Leroy Anderson said that best part of our church. Our church is becoming like a potato field. I asked him, what do you mean? He said, the best part of it is under the ground. <laughs> uh, but I'm here to tell you, we still got a good part left. And we uh, are certainly grateful to have Wilbur, one of the pioneers of our church, uh, who is no novice in the church, who I will present to you momentarily. And uh, Want you to stay with us. This is celebration time, and we're going to have a communion following the message, and then we're going to go over and uh, into the multi-purpose room, and we're going to feed everybody uh, that came out. I, I came in today and went back, and I looked at it. And the area, and I said, y'all going to set up for a king today. Y'all must have knew I was coming. Everybody <laughs> 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 simply beautiful. And uh, I, I said, they, they knew I was going to be here today, so they, they, they went out and set it up. It looked like somebody getting married over there, so. And, and, and so we, we are in celebration. Stick with us. And enjoy what the Lord has in store for you. Thank God for St. Stephen's. Yeah. Uh, they are in the midst of our, their pastor's anniversary. And I haven't been able to be there with them. Uh, but uh, they have been carrying on. I had an accident in the uh, women's community. And I'm almost there, but I ain't there yet. And, uh, still keep me in prayer and the Lord has been blessing us and I hope next week I get some on my teeth I can grin at y'all <laughs> I, I ain't quite there yet now, but I'm, I'm working in it Tremendous fall, and uh, but the Lord bless us, and uh, I have so much. Uh, I have Christmas standing around. He's able to hit so hard. He's and I, I didn't hurt my ear, but he said, "Daddy, you got something to thank God for." He said, "I hear it that day." The Lord's good. Yes. How many know the Lord is good? It's time that we would hear from heaven on today, and we're yet in our celebration of Pentecost. And uh, uh, Bishop Lewis called me for something else. Uh, he was uh, works with we're getting ready for our uh, bishops' conference which will be held here in Virginia. And uh, he has the part and the play. And with that, he wanted to come down for that. So I told him if he came down, I didn't mind him coming. But he just couldn't come and not do no work. And so <laughs> he got stuck with the, the privilege to carry the message for us on our Pentecost day. And uh, as God will have it, so does I, Bishop uh, Harvey Lewis, as I say, is no novice in our church. And uh, he's 90 years old. 
Quiet.
allow me to honor the Lord for his many blessings to all of us. And let me thank God, first of all, for our wonderful general board member who gave us the opportunity to stand before you today. Thank you, sir. And let me thank the Lord for the chairman of the Board of Bishops. Uh, Bishop Sheehan, are you looking? He has, uh, he has asked me to come to this area because the, the main convention for the Board of Bishops will be held this area in September. Yeah. I don't have to pay, but in preparation for the convention, he wanted to see how many young people, Sunday school people, would memorize the poem that I said this morning. How many, you heard me say? How many, how many did not hear me say it? You did not. You did not hear me. Well, it won't take but three minutes. Daddy had this little boy, his soul was white as snow. He never went to Sunday school because his daddy wouldn't go. He never heard the word of God that drilled the child's mind while other children went to class this boy was left behind. And so he grew from babe to youth. Dad saw to his dismay a soul that once was snowy white became a dingy gray. Realizing that his boy was lost, Dad tried to win him back. But now the soul that once was white became an ugly black. So dad started back to church and Bible classes too. He went and said to the pastor, isn't there something you can do? <laughs> pastor tried and failed and said, we are just too far behind. I tried to tell you years ago, but you would pay no mind. And so another boy is lost whose soul was white as snow. Sunday school would have saved him, but his daddy wouldn't go. Let me thank God for you, how you are supporting your pastor. Now, what the chairman she had wanted he wants to see how many young children will memorize that poem and be able to say it during the Bishop Convention. And we already have $20,000 of scholarship money. Okay. I don't 
that. What's his name? Bishop Mark Thomas. One for young man. Yeah. Where's your lovely wife? Yeah. Where is she? Oh, he's, oh she's beautiful too. <laughs> What the channel wants me to do is tell you how I learned to purchase property without money. He wants me to tell you, I'm going to tell you. And, the, and I, I got to pass it by the channel here. These are some books that we have this information in. Some school song, poem, and the uh, the story, I'll tell you about the story. But before I do it, I'm not going to take that much time. <clears throat> I'm going to ask my, is it okay if I said Brian real? <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong thing. I, uh, I don't have any scenarios. <laughs> Is that okay? Thank you. Mother, would you come and sing a solo for me?
then we can go over there. But you know, I met Mother Lewis when she was five years old. We went to school together, rolled on the bus together, sang in the Greek club together. That long. How many years, Mother? 70 years. I, and I can't see what she can say. But I don't feel like giving up. All right. Thanks, sir. Again, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the responsibility of being the chaplain for the bishop. Thank you. Thank you. Great responsibility, but uh, the Lord is able to exceed it. You know that, don't you? Abundantly, above all that we can or think. Thank you. Listen. And I'm going to be through. Time me, mother. Time me. Would you time me? Please. If I go over 15 minutes, raise your hand. <laughs> there are four things that God does not know. How many? Four. Four things that God does not know. The first one is God does not know a person he doesn't love. Amen. Thank you, Mother. I heard you say amen. He does not know a person he doesn't love. Yes, right. You can take note. It's okay. The second thing that God does not know. He does not know a sin he doesn't hate. The third thing God does not know. He does not know a sin he can't forgive. Thank you, Lord. And the fourth thing God doesn't know. He doesn't know a better time to give a sin, forgive a sin, than the present. Not tomorrow. And I'm not asking you to, you know, to ask God to forgive you for anything. I'm just talking about the four things that God does not know. Make sense? Thank you. I thank you for agreeing with me. God, there are two things that God cannot do. Did you hear me? I see Bishop shaking his head and went away. God cannot give up the opportunity to reveal and baptize us in the body of Christ. Can't give up that opportunity. He's always ready to baptize would you read? Yes, and reveal or feel us with the Holy Ghost. You agree, don't you? Good. Let me say that again. Help me say it. Help me say it. Come 
What did I say? He got slain by him. God's always. God does not know. God does not know anything he cannot forgive. All right, I'll let you off. God does not know a person that he cannot baptize and fill with. Hey, I'm getting happy. Hey! Excuse me. He does not know a person, brother. He cannot baptize and fill with the Holy Ghost. Let me just ask, how many have been baptized and filled Amen. with the Holy Ghost? Yes. I thank God that he also baptized me and filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I'm, I'm leaving that right now. I won't leave it all alone. Leave it alone. I said, Thomas, I saw this church that I liked. Now I went to the church, and it was a white church, and I said to the pastor, sir, I came to talk to you about buying this church. Buying this church? This church is not for sale. And I said to him, a service that was built for me. And the trustee said, built for you or not, this church is not for sale. And I went out of the church and walked around with mother for one year and a half. I walked around. And here's what I said. I said, God, when you gave me Jesus, you gave me this church. I did that. And the information is in the book for a year and a half. A block around. After a year and a half. The trustee who said it wasn't for sale called me. So there's another preacher who offered us a million dollars for this church. But we told him, you ain't got no money, but you are ahead of him. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, come on up here, let's talk. I went up there. We talked. And I was so excited. I said, Yeah, I want this church. And we came to a price of $900,000. Hey! Excuse me, excuse me. Hey! Thank you! I'm getting happy. I went and called Bishop Kelsey. Did you know him? I said, Bishop Kelsey, I want you to come and dedicate my church. Where's your church, Lewis? I said, 5331 Colorado Avenue, Northwest. Lewis, you up there with the white folks. That's what he told me. And I called Marion Barry. Did you know him? I called him. I said, Must the mayor come and dedicate my church? And Lewis, where's your church? I told him. He said, You are there with the rich folks. And I said, well, He came to dedicate. On that Sunday morning, when we dedicated the church, it was full. White folks, black folks, brown folks, saved folks, I mean, it was 
pack. And the people, Mr. Mr. Chairman, that thought they owned it was telling our members, we gonna get our church back. We ain't been to close. Yeah. Told my members that. We gonna get our church back. We ain't been to close. That Monday morning, after dedication, we went to closure. We walked in, I did, Perpetual Building and Law Association. When I walked in, the chairman of the trustee board stood up and looked at me and said, That's my first name. And I looked at him. I said, Mr. Heller. He was my Greek teacher in the Washington Bible College two years before that. We went to closing. And we bought the church. Hey! Excuse me. And so I stayed there 25, 30 years. I said, Mother, it's time for us to time for us to be long. And we said, let's sell this church. We put it up for sale. Folks. Came and looked at it, but the lady who had a daycare in the church really wanted it. And she she came to us and she offered us, offered me three million dollars. First offer, three million dollars. You know what I told her? Say what? Yeah. I said, if you want this church, give me another million. Hmm? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman, she went back and got another million. And she, she brought it back. Oh, Mother said, please tell me, thank you, Mother, thank you. I didn't think it was me. So she was like, we're four million. And a month ago, we went to close. Went to close. And after we paid the old church off, and all of the people that worked with us, we walked away with three point seven million dollars. Wait, don't smack. <laughs> Mr. Mr. I went to the bank and they deposited in our account three point seven million dollars. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just telling you this to show you something. You know what I'm trying to tell you, to show you? Huh? If you don't know, say, I don't know. God told me to do this. Say what you cannot see. Oh, excuse me, thank you. Say what you cannot see. Because God sees Everything that we say. Thank you. I heard you. And what God sees is always very good. Therefore, I have and you have what God sees. You know why? Say why. Death and life and the power. Thank you. Power of the tongue. Is that right? 
And what you say is what you get. So I learned how to say what I could not see. And I said it until God manifested it. But I love what you say it. It said like old Peter said. Therefore I said to you, say to the mountains, be thou the Lord. And be thou cast into the sea. And don't what? Don't doubt in the heart. But believe. Believe. Now let me say a quick word about believe. Don't let me forget it. Believe is what we do with faith. I'll say that again. Faith is what God gives you. God gives every man a measure of faith. Is that right? And God said this. God so loved the world. He gave his only God and son. That whosoever come on believe faith is what God gives you. Believe is what you do with it. He told me to say to the mountain be removed. Don't doubt in your heart but believe what you say. And you will have what you say. So I said what I could not see. Are y'all listening? And I said it until I saw it. I said what I could not see. And I said it until I saw it. Because what? Death and life where? Power to And whatever you say is what you again. That's my sermon. That's my sermon. I came to Washington, D.C. with $5. And Bishop Kelsey put me in a church that had one kid, three members. I wanted another church. And I saw one. But I didn't have the money. So I had to say what I could not see. Are y'all with me? And because I said it. And I didn't just say it. I walked around. People saw me walking around and said, what's wrong with that man? One, yeah, they did, brother. And one man I thought was my friend in the ministry. He, uh, yeah, he yeah, he, he's, uh, I'm going to get into session this morning. But what he didn't know, that before the foundation of the world, God had called me. God called me! And you too. Did you know that? Before foundation of the world. And the Bible said, God so loved the world that he won, gave his own to God. That whosoever, I'm telling you again, I'm going to my seat. Faith is what God gives us. You can believe it or not, I don't care. What did I say? Men of us going to enjoy 
and joy, everlasting life. But not too many of us are going to enjoy abundant life. Thank you. 